Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Today's Gospel is a wonderful moment as we accompany our Lord up to the Passion Week and the Cross. We remember that we are to place ourselves as well in the Gospel, and so we hear this beautiful story of the miraculous raising of Lazarus. We notice the tender side of God which gives us the courage to approach him now as we call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them, and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people, I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. <coughs> Thanks With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness, that you may be revered. 
with the Lord and there is mercy and fullness of redemption. I trust in the Lord, my soul trusts in his word. More than sentinels wait for the dawn, let Israel wait for the Lord. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, The Spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will will never die. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Now a man was ill, Lazarus, from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just trying to stone you, and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. He said this and then told them, Our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he is asleep, he will be saved. But Jesus was talking about his death while they thought that he meant ordinary sleep. So then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died, and I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas, called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go to die with him. When Jesus 
arrived, he found that Lazarus had been already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give to give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him, for Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still that where Martha had left him, had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to him, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. The Gospels tell us that Jesus had no place to rest his head, but also that he had many good and close friends. Three of those exemplary friends are mentioned in this Gospel here. Three siblings who lived in Bethany, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. They must have offered Jesus hospitality on the way to Jerusalem. Bethany was kind of a place you would stop on the, the last stop, as it were, on the way to Jerusalem, so Jesus would have gone probably back and forth over the Mount of Olives between Jerusalem and Bethany, staying there at night, recuperating with his friends and disciples. St. John tells this story, which is really kind of making Bethany famous in, uh, in addition to the fact that Jesus stayed there often. And it stirs up our faith and moves us even now in this Mass to beg our Lord to give us the most valuable thing he can give us, which is conversion for ourselves, for our family, for our friends. If you wish to get close to our Lord through the pages of the gospel, many of the saints recommend that you place yourself as one of the characters or even a bystander watching the events in the scene. In this way, you will be captivated like Mary, who hung on every word that Jesus spoke 
or perhaps like Martha, you will boldly make your worries known to him, opening your heart sincerely about them, no matter how little they might be. Now we enter the scene. Lazarus was ill at the beginning of the gospel, so his sisters send word to Jesus, simply saying this, these beautiful little words, the one that you love is ill. This could be any one of us, the one that Jesus loves, she whom the Master loves, he whom the Master loves. In Bethany, we see Christ's love and affection, which really reveals the infinite love of God for each one of us. How reassuring. And we can also see that Martha and Mary had faith that Christ could cure their brother, or they would never have sent word. When Jesus hears this, he says, this illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. And the next part is quite interesting to us. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he did the natural thing that someone who loves someone who is ill does. He waited two more days. No. So you think he would rush off immediately, but our Lord had something greater planned. How often we don't supernaturalize our own desires and wants to see them through the eyes of our Lord, who is perhaps waiting a couple more days so the glory of God may be revealed. Our Lord knew, of course, what was going to happen, but he wanted to allow the woman's faith to grow and to show his power over death. Most likely, he also wanted to prepare his disciples by the resurrection of Lazarus for his own resurrection, which was to come. And so he allows the one he loves to die. How mercifully complex this Lord of ours is. How often can we see things through his eyes rather than our own limited view when Jesus finally arrives he finds that Lazarus has already been in the tomb for four days. Lord, if you had been here, Martha, my brother, would not have died. It's completely natural that the sisters reproach our Lord. Immediately, Jesus reassures her, saying, Your brother will rise. How about us? How familiar are we with our Lord? How do we speak to him? Are we speaking to him now? listening to his voice? Do we speak with the calm confidence of the saints? We can ask Jesus now, Lord, teach me to treat you with the loving friendliness of Martha and Mary and of Lazarus. And Jesus further reassures them with these extraordinary words, I am the resurrection and the life. Don't worry, he's got this. Whoever believes in me, even if he or she dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. And he adds to her and perhaps to us, do you believe this? Martha answers with trust, as we do too. Yes, Lord, I believe. And Mary also addressed her lament to him. But we can learn something from her, from Mary's expression of faith, not just in words, but a sign of adoration. Then Mary, it says, saw him and fell at his feet. Do you see the affection and confidence with which the saints approach our Lord? Notice how their familiarity and friendship with the Lord do not displace their respect and reverence for him. They're not mutually exclusive. Rather, they accentuate it. When Jesus sees their weeping, of course, and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he is perturbed. The heart of God moved, deeply troubled. And he asks immediately, where have you laid him? And then this beautiful demonstration of God, God's tenderness, and Jesus wept. The shortest verse in the Bible. He was Lazarus' friend, and he weeps for him when he sees that he is already dead. If he sees us, cold, unwilling, rigid perhaps, with the stiffness of a dying interior life. His tears will be our life. 
I say to you, my friend, arise and walk. Now is the time. Leave that narrow life, which is no life at all. And the Jews remark about this. They say, see how he loved him, but probably would have been better said how he loves him and how he loves you, my friend. But some of them said, could he not have opened the, who, could he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? They're still complaining. Sometimes nothing is good enough. They're not moved by the tears of God. How sad it is to see those who are still dead and don't know the power of God's mercy. Perhaps we can bring them closer with our prayers, with our good example, with our words. So Jesus perturbed again, perhaps by their lack of faith, comes to the tomb. And how beautiful the details. I'll finish with this, with which St. John concludes. It was a cave and a stone was laid across it. Our Lord is interested in the details of our life. Jesus says, take away the stone, so they take it away. And Jesus raises his eyes to his Father, and he calls Lazarus out in a loud voice. The dead man came out, still bound by the burial clothes. So they untie him and restore him to his sisters. Let us go to Bethany often, to the place which is the tabernacle, our Bethany, where we can speak freely with our Lord. Have we left in this Lent the tomb of our sins, or are we still festering on certain things? For each one of us, as for Lazarus, Jesus is calling us out by name, your name, the one he loves. Come out. Hopefully, this familiar voice of Christ will get us moving. Placing love in the creed, let us declare together our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <coughs> Father God, we turn to you at this time with all the intentions that we carry in our hearts. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for Bishop Van and all the clergy, 
that they may be blessed and strengthened in guiding the flock entrusted to their care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of the church may grow in faith and live more fully in God's love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those preparing for baptism, that they may experience the joyful welcome of the Christian community this Easter, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our government leaders may be blessed with the strength and wisdom they need to carry out their public service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing of all who are suffering from the coronavirus and for the protection of those committed to their care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they may rest from their labors in God's loving care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our special intention, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father God, we bring these and all the intentions of our heart through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Sisters, and my sacrifice is yours. May be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all of His holy Church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith. 
graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man he wept for Lazarus his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true, in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who those sinners Hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, Bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in the battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Lord Jesus Christ, shepherd of souls who called the apostles to be fishers of men, raise up apostles in your holy church, particularly to our Dominican Institute. Teach them that to serve you is to reign, to possess you is to possess all things. Kindle in the young hearts of our people the fire of zeal for souls. Make them eager to spread your kingdom upon earth. Grant them courage to follow you, who are the way, the truth, and the life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.